Welcome to This American Land. I'm Bruce Burkhardt. And I'm Caroline Revelle in beautiful Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. And coming in for a landing is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. 75 million year old dinosaur bones. And these bones have got the scientists totally geeked. Wild West. In southern Utah, some scientists are still blazing trails into the wilderness. I like to think of Grand Staircase as a frontier still. You know, it's frontier for recreation, it's a frontier for scientists, and that may be especially true for paleontologists because there is so much left here to explore. Hughes, this is Titus on Barney Top. Do you read me? Go ahead, Alan. If they've got 1,000-pound loads, if that's the way they've got them rigged now, that's fine. For Alan Titus and his inspired team of scientists, these explorations have unearthed a gold mine of dinosaur fossils, so large and from such a remote location that they must be transported in a rather unconventional way, by helicopter. Well, the boxes are going to go back to a lab. It's either going to go back to the lab in Kanab, or it's going to go back to the lab at the University of Utah. We actually found an 80 centimeter long turtle. So we're talking about a turtle with a shell this long. Awesome. And it's a brand new species. We're going to put these ones on Alan's trailer. Let's put them at the front end. But before they can make it safely back to the lab for reconstruction, there's the difficult problem of loading these plaster casts. I'm helping. How many? One, two, three, four. Some weigh more than 1,000 pounds. Alan Titus is a paleontologist for the Bureau of Land Management, the federal agency that oversees these vast public lands, including the Kaparowitz Plateau. Kaparowitz is actually one of the last great untapped boneyards in North America. And there's a reason for that, because the terrain is extremely remote and extremely rugged. Well, we've got a, a million acres to go through, and we've been through about 10% of that. And you do that by walking around systematically, covering all of the outcrops. And then anytime you find a bone fragment, like the moon, you would then chase that uphill. You just immediately take the uphill line from that bone and see if there's another fragment. And sometimes, they get lucky. So I walked out here, surveyed the bottoms of this bluff face all the way around, and uh, on the way in, I actually found the pelvis of a big raptor-like dinosaur. <laughs> and then I got to this site, and there was bone coming out everywhere, all along this cliff face. And so I, uh, of course, did my science-y thing and recorded it with the GPS, made some notes, took some pictures, tried to figure out the best I could what we actually had here. And it appears to be an adult hadrosaur, which is a elephant-sized so cool. dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's still still cool to me. You know, I I see this over and over again and it still never fails to blow me away. This is a metatarsal, so it's a toe bone. We've That's got, a heck of a toe. I know, these animals, again, these, <laughs> now these aren't quite as big as the hadrosaurs, what, what I think this is. Um, what are you thinking this is? I, I, I think this is probably a horned dinosaur, kind of like triceratops. Although finding a new dig site is exciting, using care when excavating is the name of the game, as I learned the hard way. And this is the distal end of a femur. These are the two balls in the knee from the, from the leg, the back leg. You broke it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I should not be allowed to touch the dinosaur. It wasn't the only surprise of the day. I think I was if you're ever confused as to whether something's really fossil bone or not, you can always just give it the lick test. I'm sorry? Just lick it, just pick it up like. I'm gonna lick it. And, and give it a lick. And what it am should, I licking for? It, you're looking for it to grab your tongue, like, like glue. Ha, <laughs> ha,
It does okay. actually stick to my tongue. It works Completely stick every to my time. <laughs> that is so weird. Why does it do that? Well, because there's a lot of little pore spaces inside that bone that haven't been filled up with mineral. And so when your tongue hits it, it sucks all the moisture out and just grabs onto it. This is really cool. We've actually come across a site that might be something. And that's what's so amazing about this. You can just be walking around and looking at your feet and holy crow, there's a skull or something. Oh, this is the way science works. What we'd like to do is sort of probe around and slowly uncover this. That's looking pretty intriguing actually. It's that was curves. bone. Paleontology in Escalante combines the thrill of the chase with careful study that has completely changed our understanding of these ancient creatures. They were an extremely diverse, extremely successful, and very long-lived group of animals. And they burrowed, they flew, they lived in water, they lived in deserts, they lived in swamps, they lived in near-Arctic regions. They really were as successful as the modern mammals. It seems natural to compare the dinosaur to modern lizards, but Titus believes they are much more closely related to birds. Velociraptors and truodons that were amazingly intelligent, probably on par with uh, modern birds. Well, there's some evidence that dinosaurs evolved feathers or feather-like coverings very early in their history, as far back as maybe the middle or early Jurassic. Back at the lab, Titus prepares to reassemble dinosaur fossils that are like one giant puzzle. First, he must remove them from their protective shell. Compared to the chisel and hammer of the field, the tools of the lab are delicate and precise. Let's find a dental pick. Like this? Mm hmm that would work. So just try to get underneath the edge of that rock and pry it up. Oh! <laughs> Go ahead and take it off. Okay, and just move it to the side? Yeah, and we have beautiful separation. Look at that, see how that, that none of the bone came with that rock. The process of removing a bone from the rock can take months, and then the real work begins. Uh, this was actually put together by a volunteer who spent uh, approximately a month and a half cleaning each little piece of bone with a toothbrush and water and then gluing everything back together. How long could a volunteer possibly be working on one of these oh, projects? Well, this, like I said, this one took about a month and a half. I, I expect this will take about a month to finish this vertebrae here. But an extremely large, complex project like a skull could take up to two or three years. Each nook and cranny of the lab holds a treasure. Well, this is one of the newest m named members of the Grand Staircase dinosaur family. This is Teratophonius. And this is a, a sub-adult, so it's not a very large one. It would have probably oh, this got- this is not a large one. No, no, this would oh. probably gotten twice as big. Stunning vistas, fascinating discoveries. But what can these 75 million year old dinosaur bones teach us about our own world today? Amazingly enough, dinosaurs may have many lessons for us. Um, one is dinosaurs lived, at least these dinosaurs, lived in what we consider a runaway greenhouse type of climate. It's a hot house earth. Uh, global temperatures are up to 16 degrees average hotter, much hotter than anything projected for the, the modern global warming. The dinosaurs may be a key to understanding what we could expect in the next 100 years or so uh, as their world reflects what our world could become. <laughs>